Okay. Are you ready to think like Gexkin? Yes. All right. I'm Rana. Sometimes the question is actually half the answer, which is one of my favorites because when an innovator asks a different question, often he's rewarded with a valuable solution, and that's what we have here. So you and I attach things and release things all day long. We are clothes and items and things on walls. Uh, for clothes, for example, we'll use zippers and Velcro. On walls, we'll use uh, oh, adhesives, nails, screws. We use glue, all kinds of stuff. But the problem here is that uh, for clothes, certainly they're loud and bulky. But for other surfaces, they're... Um, they destroy them, damage the surface, as in puncturing it or leaving uh, residue. Um, however, even more than that, and the reason we're all here, they're disposable, toxic, wasteful. And so how do we you know, increase reuse of attaching and releasing items? So let's take all these terrible things, these bad qualities, and let's turn them on their head, right? And let's think differently. What do we really want? What would we like to have? What we would like to have is a device Right? that we can customize, we can design for our purposes, multiple surfaces, multiple applications, that can attach and release effortlessly, quietly, repeatedly. That's what we really want to have, don't we? And we don't want to affect the surfaces. So let me introduce you to the beautiful Felsuma gecko, the animal that inspired this technology. Our company is called Felsuma, however, with an F, just to make it simple. And uh, the technology is called Gekskin. So think of a, ge uh, a gecko climbing up a wall across your ceiling, and um, it has to attach and release its foot right, thousands of times in the course of an hour. Now, that energy spent, that it has to do that, has to be, in fact, a zero energy in, zero energy out, or it would be exhausted, wouldn't it, after just a few runs up a wall. Think of a piece of scotch tape, uh, pressure-sensitive adhesive, which is designed, in fact, to require energy for release. So if go back to the gecko for a second. And this is where the question comes in. So what often in this biomimicry world and gecko-like technologies, what other uh, technologists have asked is, how do we replicate a gecko's foot, which immediately takes them down a nanotechnology chemistry route? My colleagues at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst, they asked a different question. They asked, how do we replicate the properties of a gecko? Now, in so doing, it's not an immediate chemistry answer. It's the properties of a gecko. It's actually a mechanical answer, hence the device. So let's start with one assumption they made of this foot attaching and releasing. And they assumed, mathematically, zero energy in, zero energy out. That assumption, combined with a couple of others, then took them down the foundational mathematics that define Gekskin, which is what makes it remarkably exciting because those mathematics are known and understood in how we design this. So what we have here is a device. It's not an adhesive. And it's not chemistry. Here's Gexkin. This is a piece of plexiglass. This is Gexkin. But as you can see, it's attached to it. But I can peel it off, which is the whole point. And I can put it on again. And I can pull on it. And I can peel it off. And I can do this a thousand times, but I only have 10 minutes with you. <laughs> this, piece, this piece, actually, a laboratory piece, is probably three, four years old. It's been used a thousand times. We don't know how many. But the beauty of this is these are off-the-shelf materials. You and I can go down to the store and buy these. This is um, glass fiber. This is polyurethane. I have an example of Gexkin that's nylon. I have an example of Gexkin that's carbon fiber. So it's not in the chemistry, let me impress upon you. Uh, it is in the design. So let me show you another example just in terms of tuning to a different surface because that was a piece of plexiglass. This is um, a... Um, and I'm uh, an iPad, I guess we call it, don't we? So if we just want to try for a different surface, there you have it. And it can go there. And if that's blocking the sign for you, I can peel it off. And I can put it over here for you. Right? So the whole question is, how do we tune Gexkin? How do we design Gexkin to apply to the surfaces for the applications that we desire? Let's talk a minute more about structure. And let me show you what I mean by structure. So we refer to this piece here called a tendon, actually, as taken from the anatomy of a gecko, because a gecko has a very stiff tendon that attaches from its uh, bone structure, its skeletal structure, down to its foot. It's a very stiff tendon. So whereas this is the tendon here, attached at the end of the pad, here we have a tendon that's attached in the middle of this pad. 
And that immediately changes the force dynamic. Because now, for example, although you can still enjoy a shear force vertically, now you could hang something from a ceiling. Right? So now, let's think even further. The beauty of this device and the innovation behind it is the fact that we can manipulate the thickness of the tendon, the um, material of the tendon, the weave of the tendon, where the tendon is attached to the pad, multiple tendons. And then, of course, we can tune or design for the substrates, whether it's concrete, metal, glass, what have you, drywall. So this is the idea of Think Like Yekskin, because very quickly the customers that I'm going to tell you about are already starting to design Yekskin for their applications. But soon after that, as they're going to realize, OK, this is different, then they're going to start to design new concepts of how to manipulate tendons and pads for multiple services and new applications that we haven't even envisioned today. But the reuse part of it is going to be fantastic, because we're not going to have to throw away these, because we can use them again thousands of times. So last April, I'm standing in Amherst with my colleagues. And uh, we've got this fantastic technology that attaches and releases and is very powerful. And that's very nice. Now I ask you, as I always ask myself, um, who cares? Does anybody care? We all seem a lot of cool technologies. The question is, does anybody care? So I said, OK, fellas, here's what we're going to do. We're going to immerse ourselves in the world of something called the customer. And so we've spent the last five months just talking to customers. Do you care? Does this satisfy a need? Is there a pain in the marketplace? And I was delighted to find out there is an enormous pain. Remember at the very beginning of this presentation when I showed you all those loud, bulky, damaging things? Well, guess what? That actually is the beginning of the pain in the marketplace. So what we found are some very large markets by talking to the customers. So closures for apparel, for example, front of a jacket, cuff. Um, a lot of people want to hang stuff, naturally. That's where people go uh, immediately, certainly by, by virtue of the demonstration. People in the military want to hang lots of things and attach and detach assets, as the military likes to say. Uh, construction companies have things they want to hang during construction, post-construction, and of course in the household, in multiple surfaces, um, because we don't want to damage our walls. Robotics is an obvious application for most of the gecko-like biomimicry stuff. Uh, so we found our way there, or they found their way to us. Now, manufacturing is very interesting because it cuts across multiple industries. In manufacturing, imagine a, an assembly line. We pick something up, we perform some operation, and we put it down again. Now, people are using adhesives, and they're using other intense technologies to pick them up and put them down. But uh, there's a lot of waste. There's a lot of solvents. And we've come across uh, one opportunity that we uncovered wherein they can use an adhesive that does actually offer some um, solvent residue that they have to get rid of. But they can use it five times. And we can probably do this hundreds of times before they have to replace. So the manufacturing is a very interesting one for us because also we can design the gek skin to pick up in a particular angle and peel off in a particular angle. And that's also quite attractive for value proposition. And of course, there are some applications in medical devices that seem very relevant to the use of gek skin as well. So now, we've had all these conversations. That looks great. But I don't want to sit back and decide which one should I go after. So I went to these customers. I said, look, you guys, you're going to pull this out. This is not going to be a technology push. This is going to be a market pull. So I want to be a partner to you. I don't want to be a vendor. So here's what you're going to do, I told them. You're going to share in the initial risk of how do we pull this out of the laboratory. Secondarily, you're going to go find a product in which you want to incorporate Gexkin. And we're going to figure out how what that component should look like. So I sent out some letters of intent, for example. And one really wonderful one uh, for an entrepreneur was a company that has one product in which they thought they could put Gexkin that ships tens of millions of a, pro a product. And they gave us the cost target for the Gexkin component, which our modeling indicates we're competitive with. But for us, for Felsuma, it was a one-year annual opportunity of $9 million. So this is how we've engaged the customers on this customer-driven plan, which led me to the financial plan. So as I said to them, here's what you guys are going to do now. You're going to write the statements of work with me. And along with that, you're going to help me finance the beginning of the company, because I want you to take this risk with me. Because often where materials companies make an error is lab to manufacturer. Isn't that right? So that's what they are doing right now as we speak. We're writing these statements of work to begin the uh, financing, along with some angel money. But the entire purpose of risk reduction, right now it's just reducing risk. Uh, we think we know what we don't know, but let's go find out first which is the manufacturing component. And once we've proved the manufacturing, once we understand the economics of manufacturing, then I can go raise more money. 
So what's Felsuma? Business model-wise, we are a branded component maker. We want to maintain this brand in our products, uh, in our components with our customers' products. So customers are going to bring us specifications. We'll make the prototypes in our laboratory. Customers will test them. Because this is using existing materials, we can use outsourced manufacturing, coders and converters. Keep it simple. That then, we will ship uh, sheets and rolls and strips of GEC skin to our customers who will design it into their products. And for us, it's a quite sustainable business model because we'll enjoy the revenues of those recurring revenues while GEC skin is used in the, the life cycle of those products with our customers. Two big challenges, one I've referred to, is the manufacturing challenge, right? And the second, of course, is at the end of the day, we're still looking at a technology and the robustness and the environmental performance has yet to be seen. We've done a lot of informal testing, but we'll find out with our customers, and that's the whole point. They understand the risk they're getting into and are still keenly interested in bringing this to market with us. So I'm Rana Gupta. I've been in the technology development world for about 12 years. First in early stage venture capital, and um, then I took over as CEO of one of the companies we invested in, which we sold um, last year. Uh, it was a Yale spin out. And um, I also teach uh, entrepreneurial finance and technology development at Boston University. Uh, my colleagues are uh, Al Crosby, who is uh, in the polymer science group at UMass. Uh, Amherst, and Al is a, um, a soft material mechanics expert, and uh, Duncan Erschick is a biologist uh, interested in animal athletics, actually. So these two gentlemen have um, worked together, and so you can see how there's an element of, of the material side as well as the gecko anatomy that led, le, uh, led us to this. So, good council members, what am I asking of you? Uh, it seems to me I have a remarkable opportunity, or I wouldn't be here, but it looks to me that I have an opportunity which requires design for every application. And I'm happy to do that. It seems like the right way to go about it, but I'd like your confirmation of that is the right way to pull this out, not sit back and wonder what's the best application in a vacuum and engage in a technology push. But that leads me to questions of a manufacturing base, um, revenue acceleration, because I'm going to be doing this product by product, customer by customer. Uh, what are the deal terms? Because there's no question that some of the Companies are already beginning to discuss some limited exclusivity because they'll be giving us their proprietary specifications. Um, market development of Gexkin across multiple industries and brand development for our technology and branding it ultimately as a, a component product. And pricing, near and dear to my heart, certainly. How do we price this? Certainly in, in, um, in the presence of, of the other technologies that we'll be replacing. So I look forward to your suggestions as to how we should continue going about this. Thanks very much.